All right, so what we were talking about last time? We used text files. And sure, you can save text files. The cool thing about text files is that they're kind of like a common language between all computers, right? Um, you can write a program that'll generate a text file and then on another system, you know, anything can open, read, and write to a text file. Is that the most efficient way? No. When you really, really, really need efficient data access or you're dealing with vast amounts of data, you're probably going to wind up using a database server, you know, SQL server or something like that. But what is uncool about writing to a text file? Say you had an object, you had a patient, and the patient had a name and a last name and a birth date and a, you know, a blood type and a, and a temperature and a medical history and stuff like that. You had a complex object and you were going to save that to a file. Well, you would have to write it out member by member, right? file.write, first name, file.write, last name, file.write, birth date, and stuff like that. And then when you were going to read it back in, you'd have to know, okay, well, that was supposed to be a birth date, so I guess I'm going to parse the data and put these numbers here and put these numbers here. So it's Java gives us something really cool. It does not create files that are compatible with other languages, though. So if you're going to write your file in Java and then you want your Python or your C++ program to read it, then the object output stream, the file output stream, is not the way to go. But what it lets you do is to write an entire object out with one call, right? You could write your patient record out with a single call. Boom. It's written out. Then when you want to open it, you issue a single call and it reads it back in. Magically reconstitute it, right? So that's an incredibly efficient way of saving data to a file or reading data from a file if you know that you're going to be doing it in Java and that the only thing that needs to be reading it is in Java. I don't know if anybody's ever tackled that problem or how you would get these things to be cross-platform. Not cross-computer, right, but, you know, between C++ and Java or Python or whatever. Not only that, what if you have a whole bunch of objects in an array list? Well, that an array list is an object. You could write out that an array list with one call, and it could save a thousand items to the file because they were all already saved in the array list. So it's an object... Output streams, file output streams are really cool for that purpose. And so we need to do an example of that. First, we're going to use an object output stream in the dumb way. Right? We're just going to write data out to it, just like it was a text file, except they're going to be objects. So for that, I do want to create a little project. So whenever you look at code examples, you see people being too clever by half, in my opinion. Here somebody is creating an anonymous object. They're creating a file output stream, and then they're passing that into the object output stream just, you know, without ever having stored it in, a, in, a, in its own file name without its reference. I don't like doing that. We'll revise this code a little bit. Of course, this totally works. But I like having each object actually be stored in its own variable, and then you can use it. Like you see down here, right? They created the file, the object input stream, and they created the file input stream, and they did it in two places rather than once. So I don't get why they did it that way. Anyways, so what we're going to do is we're just going to write something. I'll tell you what. Int choice is equal to 1. And then if we wind up doing multiple things, so if choice is equal to 1, then file example 1. So let's create a method public static void file example 1. Public static void file example 1. So what is this going to do? Write to a file using object output stream. We're just going to be writing discrete pieces of data out rather than an entire, you know, programmer created object, one that we've created. Okay. So let's get our file name, but we're gonna we're gonna cheat. We're going to uh, 
use a file name that we just pass in. Right, so this is going to be example one. And I'm going to call it .txt, but you're not going to be open it with a text editor, really. So that's a bad file name for it. You know, people usually call binary text files, things that aren't text editor compatible, something like .dat, but okay. And then so what I've done is when we call file example one, that's going to be our file name. That way we're not going to ask the user to type in a file name. Let's create a new file. File f is equal to new file, file name. Of course, it doesn't know what a file is. You know what I really like to do is let's try the uh, java.io.star business. I'm going to come up here and under the package just do import java.io.star and hope that that prevents me from having to add each and every class as I use them. So I just tack that on up here underneath the package. Going back down here. Okay, so we have a file. So then, file output stream, capitalizing the F and the O and the S, FOS is equal to new file output stream. And we're going to pass our file object in as its parameter. And what it, we're already starting to get exceptions, right? Because we've said that I.O. is so fraught with peril that Java defined all of these things as having checked exceptions. And checked exceptions are the ones that you have to handle or else the code will not compile, and that's the case here. And we can handle that in a minute. So why did I call it FOS? Just because that's a cute abbreviation for file output stream, right? And then object output stream, OOS, is equal to new object output stream passing FOS into it. And that gets us another exception. All right. Let's write some data. Let's get a name. String name is equal to Joe Bob. Let's get an age. Double or float. Age. Why would you need a double to store someone's age? Anyways, double age is equal to new double. And they are 33 years old. Why did I make it a double rather than a primitive? Same reason that we can't add primitives to an array list, right? Because these things are trying to do stuff with objects. And then we're going to write this out to the object output file. OOS dot write. Oh, see, we could... Uh, call write double and write it just like that. And we could call write float and write it just like that. You could also just call write object. And that's actually what I want to play with. Sure, you could call a specific one. Here's what, what I was pondering for a second. You could do this. OOS dot write double. And we could pass that age in like that. That's great. But, why is that giving us an error? Unreported exception. Okay, great. Pretty soon we're going to have to put try catch around this stuff, right? But I really want to just use write object. No, you know what? I, I'm going to let it hang like this. We're going to do it this way. Okay, so let's write out our name OOS dot write. Now, see, writing a string. It doesn't give us one for writing and reading a string. Instead, it's just got write object. So I'm going to write the name out as an object. So write object name. And I'm going to write the double out as an object as well. I'm going to ignore the little niceties because they weren't consistent. They didn't give me a, a cute one for handling um, strings. They did for doubles. All right. And then I'm going to close the file. FOS.close. All right. We've got bunches of errors. Excuse me. Unhandled exceptions we need to catch. I'm going to modify the code a little bit now. Where it says new 
file output stream. Yeah, I'm just going to do a try up here and we're going to put the whole code in a block. Now if we hover our cursor over the first one, it says unreported exception, file not found exception. We have to handle the file not found. All right. So, catch, parentheses, file not found. You know, we could even click on the error and have it add it for us. That's going to save us time. I'm going to come over here and click on the warning and do add catch clause. See what I'm doing there? And it added the catch clause for it. Now, put in something I don't like. I don't want that, but it added the catch clause to save me some typing. I'm going to do that for the second one. Object output stream throws I.O. exception. Okay, cool. Add catch clause. Again, I'm going to remove the logger call. I'll go and fill this stuff in in a minute. Really? That's all I had to do? And what about this one? I see a warning here. Convert to a try with, re res try with resources. That's not a bad idea, right? Because then we wouldn't have to close it ourselves. Okay, so now we have nested try blocks. That's really not what we wanted. So I'm going to undo that, but I do want to do that. So try, and I'm going to put parentheses there, and I'm going to cut this first file output stream FOS. You know what? I'm not going to do that. Forget it. Old school. Just try, do some stuff, and then catch. And I'm not going to convert to a try with a resource just because I want these two things to be that obvious, what we're doing, not hide one of them in the try statement. Okay, now let's run it. Oops, I forgot to put some error messages here. System.out.println could not open plus file name. That would be our file not found exception. And then IO exception, let's just print an error. System.out.println IO exception and it maybe print out the exception itself. System.out.println ex.get message. So, find off found exception will be something like if we give it an invalid path, we reference a drive letter that doesn't exist. All righty, I'm curious as to whether this is going to work now. run it. I didn't put any print statements, so I'd have no idea what it did, right? <laughs> I'm going to put a print statement down here. System.out.println file example one returned. How about that? Just so I see that it did something. Okay, now if I go out and I look in that directory, I should see my file with the appropriate file name, ex1.txt. There it is, ex1.txt. Now if I open it, am I going to see it? No, this is what it looks like. This gives you kind of an inkling of the magic that's going on behind the scenes. The data file has some data, right, Joe Bob? Some of this stuff tells it that that's a string. And then we also wrote out a double, and we see a reference to the java.lang.double class there. Java.lang.number. So anyways, the code would use, magically, without us needing it, needing to be more specific, this information so that it could read it back in. So let's write some code that will read that data back in. Did everybody get this working? I don't want to play some past it if you didn't. Mine's working, but I clicked a bunch of stuff. 
Okay, so let's read that stuff back in. We've written it out, right? Hopefully it worked, right? If we get to this point and it didn't work, we're in deep trouble. Maybe we ought to return false or something like that if it didn't, if it didn't work, but okay. So now that we have written it out, let's read our data back in. Read from the object file. It's going to be very similar. We have a file name. We already even have a file statement. You know what? We, we ought to actually put this in its own method. Sorry, guys. Changing my mind slightly here. Let's do a public static void. Void file example two, parentheses string file name. Read from an object file. So, same kind of business. File f is equal to new file parentheses file name. I shouldn't have capitalized file name, my mistake. And then file input stream, FIS, instead of FOS, is equal to new file input stream, passing in our file handle. And then we need an object input stream. Object input stream, OIS, is equal to new object input stream parentheses FIS. Now we need to read those two things in. We're going to read in two objects. The first one was a double, and no, the first one was a string, and the second one was a double. So string name equals parentheses string in parentheses OIS dot read object. And then let's also get our double out of it. String age, no, it's not a string though. Double age equals parentheses capital D double OIS dot read object. Then we can close our file. Yes, sir. I've got a I've got a typo there. You're correct. All right, good. Now the only errors are the uh, unhandled exceptions, and now we're good to go. So let's close our object input stream, our file input stream. So f i s dot close. But we know we need to put all this stuff in a try catch. So. Try, tab all that stuff over. And then, so here's the first one. File not found exception. I'm going to hurry it up. See, what you did is you did add the rows clause. And we know what that does. It just tells the compiler, and eh, we're going to pass the buck. We're not going to actually catch it. So I want to do an add catch clause. There's one of them. What else? IO exception, add catch clause. I'm still getting a warning with that one. Oh, convert to try with resources. And what about this one? Unreported exception, class not found. We'll talk more about that one in just a second. Add catch clause for class not found. And that makes them pretty much all go away. This one says could be replaced with a multi catch. And that's true. I'm not gonna, but watch what would happen if I chose this. Replace these three catches with a multi-catch. Then it says IO exception or class not found exception. That might be okay. I don't mind leaving it that way. But anyways, we need to print out our error. File not found system dot out dot print line could not open space plus file name. And the next one is just a generalized kind of exception that we need to print out the error. System dot out dot print line reading from file error or error reading file, that's what I should have said. And then let's actually print out the exception. 
ex dot get message. Alrighty. Since we've gone to the trouble of reading all this stuff in, we ought to print it out, huh? So up here, above my FIS close, I'm going to do system.out.println red. Let's use a printf to save ourselves a little bit of typing. Red colon name equals percent %s, age equals percent %d, backslash n, end quote, comma. And the first thing we're printing out, first placeholder is name, and the second placeholder is going to be filled with age. I did a dummy mistake, right? I created a, a method, but I never called it. So it's not invoking this stuff. So down in main, where we did file example one, I also put a call to file example two. Okay, here we go. File example two, same file name. And then system.out.println file example to return. Oh, and it blew up. Illegal format conversion exception. Okay, that's because it didn't know that age needed to be a double, lowercase d. This is dumb. Age dot. To string and then just change that to a percent s up here. I should have just printed it out with two print statements and not worried about it. All right, and so it did, in fact, read that Joe Bob, age 33, we retrieved that data from the file. And, you know, we could put that in a loop where we kept reading the, those pairs of values or whatever if we needed to read in a whole bunch of names and a whole bunch of, bunch of ages. So that method does work, right? Writing out the, each little unit of data, at least we don't have to do any complex conversions, right? Object, um, the write object and the read object handle that conversion for us. It handles turning the, uh, you know, the double that was written out into an object of type double and stuff like that. And if we had an object of type date, it would write it out and we could read that back in. The object can be as complex, you know, as any data type. But what if we had, like I said, a data type that composed of a whole bunch of things? Not just that. Let, let's go up and make our own silly little class. Can't make it public. Class animal, right? Same kind of thing we've been doing. String name, string species, string color, we wouldn't even have to make it a uppercase D, and then double H. And let's make a constructor for that so that we don't have to sweat making it. Public animal. Parentheses, string name, comma, string species, comma, string color, comma, double age. And we're just going to set the this values. This dot name equals name. This dot species equals species. This dot color equals color. And this dot age equals age. So we have a cute little object now that we can use. 
if we were going to write this out using the mechanism, the mechanism that we just seen, every time you wanted to save an animal to the file, you'd have to write out his name, his species, his color, and his age. But we're not feeling that. We want to write it out with one call. So hopefully you have that method. Hopefully you have that class typed in. Anybody need more typing time? Okay. So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to write a method where you pass it an animal and a file name, and it'll save the animal to that file name. But that's not going to be part of the animal class. Conceivably, you could do that. But let's not. All right, so let's come down here. I'm going to take a little side diversion here. Can we append to an object output stream? Open file output stream for a pin in Java. Okay, when you create the file output stream, if you pass in a Boolean variable then and set that variable equal to true, then it will append it. That would be kind of nice because right, we could keep writing out objects one by one if we wanted to. I don't know if we're going to do that yet, though. Okay, so here, public, static. Let's make it return true or false based on whether it succeeded or not, right? And so if we catch an error, we're going to return a false. Otherwise, we're going to return true. So Boolean, write animal, parentheses, string file name, comma, animal an. So since we're writing it, we're going to need file output streams and stuff. But anyways, file f is equal to new file, parentheses, file name. Try, open brace, file output stream. We could just copy this stuff. File output stream, fos equals new, file output stream, parentheses, file name. And if we put true here, it would open it for appending rather than replacing it each time. I'm going to do that just for fun. So that we could call it multiple times and it would keep adding animals to it. All right, and then we need our object output stream. Object output stream OOS equals new. Object output stream FOS. Now let's write our animal out. OOS dot write object parentheses and the animal that was passed in. And then we can close our object output stream. OOS dot close. Then we better handle our exceptions. Fastest way to handle our exceptions would probably just be to go copy them from another one. I'm going to go to the other place where we did uh, write object and copy those exceptions and paste them, just in the hope that that's faster. Okay, so here we had a file not found exception and an IO exception. I'm just going to copy those, and I'm going to scroll back up to my new place and paste them after my try statement. All right. So we're going to have to go modify our client to create an animal and to send it out here, right? My little bit about choice equals one and choice equals two, I think here's where we might want to take advantage of it. Everybody get the catches, though, added? You saw what I did. I just yanked them from another one of them. I'm still getting an error here. What's that error? Because it didn't return true or false. Okay, that's right. If you get down to the end of it, it means that it did not fail. So I'm going to return a true there. But if we catch an exception, I'm going to return false in those cases. Now I kind of wish I hadn't. 
But anyways, like that. Then you can check the return value and see whether the, uh, the writing succeeded or not. Okay, let's go down to main. Way down here. Where we had choice is equal to one, let's change it. We're done testing this code. So choice is equal to two. If choice is equal to two, we need to make an animal. Animal dog is equal to new animal. And we have to fill in our information. Gee, if I remember the order in which these things came in, that'd be great. Okay. In a C. All righty. So name. Lassie. Species. Holly. <laughs> I don't think. And then uh, color. Mixed. Lassie's an old girl. She's 17. Now let's write her out. Right animal, our dog. Apparently that's not the name of my method. Oh, I didn't pass in the file name. So, animals.txt, end quote, comma, dog. Let's do that, and then let's open that file and, and kind of see what it looks like. But then we're going to write something to read that in. Haha, <laughs> IO exception. Doesn't tell us what. Well, then I'm going to set a breakpoint on our call here and step through it. All right, so I'm going to step in to that call. I'm going to execute a line with step over. I'm going to step over again. I'm going to step over again. I'm going to step over again, and it caught an exception. Not serializable. That was my mistake. I wish it had actually printed that, you know. When I told it to print the exception out, why didn't it print not serializable? Why did it just give me a generic one? But anyways, okay. So, to make your own classes work with object output streams and object input streams, you just have to do this. Implements serializable. That interface gives Java everything it needs in order to read it and write it to a file. Now it is going to work. It doesn't print anything because I haven't put any print statements anywhere to let it know that it worked. But let's create another animal and write it out as well. Animal cat equals new animal. Fluffy is a Persian who is white. Dr. Evil's cat. And Fluffy's five, six, something. And then call right animal and save that one to the same file. Right animal parentheses quote. animals.txt, end quote, comma, the cat. And I'm going to remove my breakpoint. Run. And now I should be able to go back out into my NetBeans folder and see that file. animals.txt. Okay, again, is this readable through the human eyes? No. But there it is. With word wrap engaged, you see that it's pretty, pretty long. If the object output stream, object input stream classes require a lot of information and able to reconstitute this data.
from the bytes that are stored on the disk. But if we looked in here, we'd see the word Lassie somewhere. We'd see the word Fluffy somewhere. Like that. Fluffy the Persian, the white fluffy Persian cat. Stuff like that. Okay. Now we could we could go write something that would read it in just like that. The problem then becomes we want to read in file, um, you know, animals until we hit the end of the uh, of the file. And I actually had not planned on doing that, so we may have just a little, little, little bit of debugging in order to figure out how to get that to work. But I think we can do that. So as along with write animal, I may as well just copy this and change it to read animal. public static boolean read animal but we're not going to pass in an animal so you could type this already file f is equal to new file based on the file name try this stuff it's an input stream. So file input stream, FIS is equal to new file input stream, passing our file in. And then object input stream. Object input stream, OIS is equal to new object input stream. Okay, and because I don't know how to fix this problem yet without re researching it, I'm going to do something stupid, which is just throw it in a while true loop and let it read data in until it crashes. Is this the correct way to do it? No, it's not. But here's what we're going to do. Animal A is equal to new, no, not even equal to new animal. Animal A equals OIS dot read object but we have to cast it to the correct type. You know, read object knows how to build an object, but it sure doesn't know what it just read. So, animal, like that. And so now we have all of our try catches. I'm gonna go down to the other one that did the read object and then copy and paste those exception handling things. So I'm gonna control F, read object, Here's the other place where we read an object. I'm going to grab that catch statement and that catch statement. This is just in the interest of time. So even including my little typo there. And then I'm going to go and put that up here. After my try. And if we get all the way to here and it worked great, return true. But for any exception that we catch, we're going to return false. What's wrong with return true? Unreachable statement. Says who? Oh, I forgot, maybe y'all did this, but I didn't. When I created my object input stream, I didn't put FIS here. Right, you create your file, you pass that in as the parameter of the argument to the file input stream. You pass that as a parameter to object input stream. Okay, so back inside of our while loop. While true, system.out.println, a.name, just to prove that we got something or quote read, end quote, comma, a dot name. Wait, why does that give me grief? No suitable method. Oh, plus sign, plus sign. I'm sorry, I am slipped into Python there. Read, space, end quote, plus a dot name. All right, if these return statements are going to give me grief, I'm just going to change the return type to void and be done with it because I don't see why that 
is an unreachable statement. Oh, I probably already have a return true up here. I don't, but that's the right place to put it. So, return true here, but we need to close our file once we're done. So, ois.close. And I know why it's really complaining. It's because it's a while true loop, and there's no way for it to ever exit. So, what am I going to do about that? I guess temporarily I'm not going to handle that at all. Okay. So there is no return true in here. It's just going to run until it fails, but that's okay. See, I shouldn't have made it append to the file. I should have made it override it each time. I'm causing myself errors. All right, so it ran. What did I do wrong? I didn't call read animal. So let's come down here and modify our code so that down here in main we're going to make a new choice if choice is equal to three if choice e if parentheses choice equals three then call read animal quote animals dot txt and then print system dot out dot print back from read So since I've run this several times, who knows how many fluffies and lassies are in that file by now. Error reading file. Writing aborted. Java.io not serializable exception. Read animal return. But we said that it was serializable. Okay, I'm getting really paranoid about that appending business. We're going to change it so that right animal doesn't append to it. So just come on up here and where we had right animal, control F, right animal. Where we create our file output stream, delete that comma true. That'll just overwrite the file every time rather than append it. And that being the case, I think we can afford to call read animal and write animal one after the other. So come down to the main code. And let's still make this choice is equal to two. So go back to this being choice is equal to two. Grab that read animal and that system.outprint line and just paste them down here at the bottom after we've written out Fluffy, right? Now, it doesn't make sense to write two things out because we've changed it to not append, and so there's only going to be one thing in it, but that's okay. This way, it'll write it and immediately read it. Okay. Now, see, this is what I was expecting to be to see to begin with before we got that not serializable error. We could probably have gotten this to work by deleting the file and then re letting it run again. But so it did read our animal. We're only seeing one little bit of information out of it. But since we put it in a while loop, it tried to read again, and it got a null error. So because there wasn't any additional data to read in it. What if we wanted a whole series of animals to write out? We could do that, and that'll be the last thing that we want to do today. So I do need to fix read animal so that it doesn't crash. So we are going to take out the while true. 
So I scrolled up to read animal, I removed the while true, and I'm going to call ois.close, close the object. And now I do need a return statement, so return true. So we're going to take one that takes an, an array list of animals. Public, static, boolean, write animal list. And what does it take? It takes a string file name, comma, and then an array list. Array capital L list, parentheses, animal, or not parentheses, sorry, angle brace, less than sign, animal, end brace, a list. It probably doesn't know what an array list is. I'm going to have to add the import for that. Add import for java.util.array list. Now we should type all the code in, but look, it's just the same thing, except instead of writing an animal out, we're going to be writing an array list out. So I'm totally going to cheat. I'm scrolling down to my right animal code now. You see where we are? We're in the right animal code. And I'm just going to copy the guts of that method, because it's just the same stuff. So everything from the opening, right? file f is equal to new file name, all the way down to the close, the return true. Just copy all that and paste it into your right animal list method. But we've got one thing to fix, right? Because what are we writing? We're not going to write a variable a in. We don't have a variable a in. We're writing out a list. And then what about read animal list? Honestly, read animal list ought to return the entire list, right, rather than return true or false. Okay, have I lost ourselves to the point where nobody's t oh, typing along with me? Or are we all, have we all caught up by, I mean, have we all caught up by some mir miracle? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go down to main. We created two animals down in main somewhere, right? So let's make an array list of animals. Array list, angle brace animal. This is inside my choice is equal to two code. I should have made a new choice altogether, but I already have my two animals and I don't feel like recreating that code. Array list animal. A list equals new array list, capital A, capital L, less than, greater than, parentheses, in parentheses, semicolon. Now let's add our two animals to it. A list dot add our dog. A list dot add our cat. And then let's call write animal list. Write animal list A list along with our file name. How about just a list.txt, comma a list. So maybe you see what I mean. That animal list could have 7,000 different animals in it. But our code only had one write statement, right? It wrote out that entire object because that object is a composite and aggregation of all the other animals that have been added to the array list. And our animal class, you know, composition, has got a whole bunch of other data pieces in it. The only problem, besides the fact that it's not cross-platform compatible with C++ and stuff like that, is what if you change your animal class? All of a sudden, your old data files are no longer valid. It insists on your, it stamps each class with some kind of, uh, with some kind of key that we don't see, but it knows if you've made a change to it. And then if you make a change to that class, then it can't open and read the old data file. 
So that can be a real drag. What do you have to do? Well, I'm going to write a conversion utility that reads them all in in the old format and writes it out in the new format, that kind of stuff. So that is a slight drawback to it. And thinking about how to fix it, not sure. Okay, so we're going to do a read animal list. It'll probably be the last thing we do to the, today. It'll be very similar to the other ones. Public, static, but let's return our animal list. Read animal list. Wait, I forgot to use my array list. Public static array list parentheses or less than animal greater than read animal list parentheses string file name Some try file f equals new file passing in the file name. We're reading, so we need input streams. File input stream fis equals new file input stream passing in f as a parameter. Object input stream. OIS equals new object input stream, parentheses FIS, file input stream. Now let's make an animal list, or reference, array list, parentheses animal, not parentheses, less than animal, greater than, a list equals and now we're going to have to cast it. Parentheses, array list angle brace animal end angle brace dot ois dot read object. No, end parentheses followed by ois dot read object. And we need all of our catches as well. Add a catch clause for that one. Add a catch clause for that one. Add a catch clause for that one. Go ahead and let it combine these two multi catch. And then replace these with print statements. That makes some kind of sense. System.out.println could not open file. Space plus file name. And if it's one of these errors, then we're going to write out system.out.println file error space end quote plus ex.get message parentheses in parentheses. Now, if we get an error, then it failed, and we're going to return a false. Excuse me, we're going to return a null. But if it succeeded, if we got up here and we actually read our list, then we're going to return that list. Now, we ought to be nice and close the file first, but it, honestly, it, if it gets closed as soon as we leave that, uh, that block of code. But why not? OIS.close and then return a list. Now we gripe it at. Oh, it still want me to do try with resources. Okay, forget it. Alrighty, I'm gonna scroll down now to my main because I called right animal list somewhere. So down here, I wrote an animal list, now I'm going to get my animal list. Array list, angle brace, animal, end angle brace, a list 2, equals read animal list, parentheses quote, a list.txt, end quote. And we have to check, make sure it's not null, because if it was null, that was an error state. So if a list 2 not equal to null, then we're going to print out something, maybe just with a for loop. 
for animal A colon A list 2. And if we'd added a two string method and stuff like that, that'd be really fun. But system dot out dot print line. We read space plus a dot name in parentheses and semicolon. All right, there's some chance this is actually going to work. All right, and it did. Read animal returned. Well, that's different code entirely, right? But we read Lassie and we read Fluffy. So you saw what we did? We built a list. We built a, a, a structure that could have held hundreds, thousands of animals, and we wrote it out with one call, and then when we were ready, we turned around and we read it in with one call. So it is an extraordinarily convenient way of saving data. I hope you see that. We went from just writing out single chunks of data at a time, for which you could have used a text file with, with a little bit more difficulty doing some data conversion, to writing out objects, to writing out a collection of objects. I do wish that I had gotten that pin down in my mind before I started lecturing you so I could show you that because it's kind of useful, right? You don't just want to read in and write out one object. In this case, it's okay because the one object is a whole list of other objects. All right. I know that I, I lost some of y'all and you stopped typing and you're going to watch the video, but who was trying to get it to work? It was not. Did it work for you? I'm not trying. Uh, let's comment out one of our choices. Let, let's get rid of. Let's go up and look at what read animal is supposed to take. That's read animal. What's up there? Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's look at read that parentheses. Because we just replaced it. That one. Because we just replaced it. Oh, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry, we were casting. We needed all that. Yeah, okay. There's a couple of those things. What's that one? Let me close the rays. Something's going on with our, with our braces, I think. Oh, no. This is the return statement. Okay, if it gets to that point, back up to read animal. And I think the deal is is that we started to make it where we could pass in an animal object if we changed our mind. So get rid of that animal A list business. Control S. That should go. I've got one of my rules to take out. That's just a typo.
think we have too many clothes and braces now. I think that's what's going on there. Take off one of these clothes and braces. So for some reason it thinks that file example two can throw an exception. So scroll back up for file example two. Not in this particular case. Maybe yeah, others in one of the others. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to step. Right yeah. So now we're going to read animal list two. So step into that. Oh, we did. You're right. You're right. That's what it was. We never returned our new object. So here, just do return space a list. See what was happening. We built our animal list, but then we just returned null, so it didn't have anything to iterate downstairs. All right, we're, we're definitely going to hit that one more time on the next lecture because I know that I had us typing in an insane amount of stuff. We went from one example to two examples to three examples. We're just going to repeat the third one, which is the most useful form of the uh, object output and object input stream.
we've read our A list, we need to return it. So just add return space A list there. Said we're definitely going to have to do that one, one, a little bit of that one, one more time. Yes, sir. No problem. 